or in when investing.com has had time to edit it and clean it up, you'll be able to find it on the investing.com website under the education tab and then webinars on demand. So now let's get started discussing interpreting price action and making sense of price movements. And tonight we're gonna to look at using what we call the inside bar. It's one way that we can help figure out what price is trying to tell us on a chart. Now in tonight's class, I'm gonna to use the term security, but I might say Facebook, I might say Google, I might say Bitcoin, I might say the Euro. I'm probably gonna to to show you charts from all the different assets, but I'm talking about them on a generic basis because everything we're gonna be talking about tonight, every concept works for all publicly traded financial instruments in which an open market exists. Similarly, I intermix the terms investing and trading. Typically, an investor takes a long-term position, while a trader takes a much shorter-term position. In either case, the basic concepts and techniques presented in this class are equally adept. But I tell you this because in all my years of giving classes, the nastiest emails I've ever gotten from somebody, or on a regular basis, I mean, doesn't this idiot know the difference between trading and investing? Okay, well, of course I do, you do. But it gets very boring to saying trading, 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 trading. So I mix up the terms. You know what we're talking about. Now, whenever I'm giving a seminar, I'm giving a live event, I'm doing meeting new traders. The first thing everybody asks me is, what should I buy today? What will the price be an hour from now? What, what price should I enter the market? What will the prices be tomorrow, next week, next year? What is the price going to be after the Federal Reserve meeting? Well, wouldn't investing or trading be easy if we knew the answers to these seemingly simple questions? But to be honest with you, I don't have a crystal ball and I don't have a Ouija board. And anybody who does, I can tell you right now, they're lying. Anybody who tells you they can give you a way or a strategy to predict where the markets will be, when they're going to go there and exactly where the trade... Well, you know what? They'd all be billionaires. They don't need to be talking to you, sharing strategies or anything else with you. The fact is the only thing that can help us understand where the price will be later is actually price action. Now, tonight we're going to be looking at charts and trying to interpret price action. But you have to have methods to understand what charts are telling you. And there's all kinds of indecision candles. There's kinds of triangles and chart patterns. And tonight, we're going to add into your understanding of what you're looking for in price is the inside bar. And as the name implies, an inside bar forms inside of a large candle called a mother candle. Now, even though we're talking about candles, we're not talking about candlestick patterns tonight. We're not talking about candlestick anything. Okay, If we're using a candlestick chart, the first candle we've named the mother candle or the mother bar. It's a pattern that forms after a large move in the market and represents a period of consolidation. This is why trading this pattern can be so profitable. You are essentially buying or selling a breakout or a continuation of a preceding trend. Notice how the second candle in the image is completely engulfed or contained in the previous candle. In this case, the bearish candle, the mother bar, represents the broader downtrend, while the bullish candle, the inside bar, represents the consolidation after a decline. Oops. So this is known as the mother candle. And this second candle is what we call the inside bar. We don't care whether it's got long wicks, short wicks. We don't care whether it's a doji, a hammurabi. We don't care if it's a bullish engulfing. But we're not talking about Japanese candlestick patterns. Okay, we're talking about inside bars. Now the second bar, the inside bar is completely contained by the high and the low of the first bar, the mother candle. So if we simply took a jet candlestick, or if we were just using a bar chart and drew a line 
across from the high and the low, the next candle would have to be fully engulfed inside that candle, okay, or inside that bar. So we have the mother and the inside bar. Now, keep in mind that there can be more than one candlestick bar or bar that forms or also is fully engulfed by the candlestick to the left. At minimum, this is a two bar pattern. So in other words, this is bar one, this is bar two. But we could have a third bar, we could have a fourth bar, we can have a fifth bar. All that we're saying is if you drew the line across from the high and the low of what we call the mother candle, all the subsequent candles would be inside bar. Okay, now we have to talk about how you identify the mother bar. Let me just get these markings off your screen. Now, what is an inside candle? The mother bar, and so you see three different assortments of inside bar candles. Okay. Now, all the requirement is, is that the inside bar is all contained within the mother bar. So in our graphic, we show a strong bullish candle. Bullish because it's green, we could have a bullish bar. What it simply means is the open, the close was a lot higher than the open. So that's bullish. If we were looking at a bar, instead of a candlestick, we'd have our high here, our low here. We would have our open here and our close here, and we would draw our bar through it. And it would give us the same piece of information. So let's step back one second and start being a little bit more precise. What is in an inside candle and the details really matter? Because it sounds really easy. Okay, whenever you see this big candle over here and the next candle is inside of it, you can do this and do that. But it isn't so simple because we're trying to interpret what price is telling us. Now, we have price. We have lots of bars before this. We have lots of candlesticks before this, but you can only trade going forward. And so you need something that's going to tell you what is coming at you, not what happened an hour ago, not what happened yesterday. You need to know what is coming forward at the wall. So let's assume our green mother bar is the largest one in recent price action on the charts. The market has moved with momentum and the next candlestick on the chart can't take out the previous bars high and low. So what are you looking at? You're looking at two candles, that's it. You're looking at the most recent candle and the candle before it, that is it. You're not going back and looking for weeks or months of action. You're not trying to find some pattern inside of everything else. When you have a mother bar formation and a mother bar is not just a small bar and then another bar form, it was a significantly large move with momentum. And the next candlestick on the chart can't take out that high and low. So in other words, we had this big move. And then what happened is if we had the momentum moving up here and price was continuing to climb and the bulls were staying in the market, we should see this next candle pushing at least the high higher than the, bot than the previous candle, but it didn't. So something is happening with the momentum. So this happens as the move is digested. Remember, we have traders using all different time frames. So we could have traders taking profits on their buys from a lower time frame, momentum traders bailing out as there's no follow through. We have contrarian traders who may be trend traders, traders from another time frame taking short positions. There's all things that are happening out there. 
So there are more reasons, of course, but we can't cover all the scenarios. Just the higher level ones. Understand that when you see this type of chart pattern, whether Forex trading or trading stocks, you are looking at an inside bar trading type of setup that depends on momentum showing up to carry price through the high and the low of the previous candle. The candlestick looks strong because it's one of only two candlesticks shown. We can only say with confidence, strong bullish of the green candle is larger than most of the price action that would have formed to the left of it. Okay, Left has been over with before. So what is an inside bar? Now, on these charts, I've drawn them in past where you can see them on charts, but the only one that actually would matter would be here. But here is an inside bar. Look at this move. We have this huge move. We have this candlestick high, low. Okay. We don't care what happened here. Something happened. But the next candle is fully contained inside that candle. And so is the third candle. But then what happens here? It's outside of that mother range. So lo look at the next candles. You're always looking for some big move and then the candles coming right after it. So we have the green candle, the bullish candle. Then we have the bearish candle, but there's still mother candle and baby candles because they're all contained within. And then we have the next candle. So the golden rule about trading with inside bars is do not trade an inside bar in isolation. And when you only have one candle, when you have the mother candle and then the inside bar candle, it's too risky when there's just one. Since the inside candle has a lower high and a, a higher low than the previous candlestick on the chart, this indicates that the currency pair or the asset is consolidating. Why is it consolidating? It is consolidating because the bulls cannot manage to create a higher high. And at the same time, the bears fail to create a lower low. Now remember the market is a constant battle between bulls and bears. That just gives you price action. And all of this market is made up of human beings. And I know a lot of traders find the concept of human psychology difficult to accept but the fact is it's impossible to predict what a human being is going to do at a specific time and because the market's made up of millions and millions and millions of human beings okay, they're the ones that are affecting the price not some calculation based on supply and demand because that does affect it but it's what the human beings are responding to from those supply and demand figures. Let's talk about something easy. Let's talk about commodities. And we're talking about wheat. Now, we see that the new harvest report comes out and shows that, you know, the farmers are producing a lot, lot more wheat. So we have a lot bigger supply. Now that should tell you that the market should drop right away. But what happens is the traders decide it's too early in the season and we got rain in the forecast and we have some, we've had some tough weather, we have climate change and they don't send the price down because they're human beings, they're making independent decisions. Now, if you were just gonna respond to the, the, the crop report, you would have been wrong and lost your money. So there are five characteristics that matter when we're looking at an inside bar trade. First, remember the location on a chart and that mother bar and the inside bar are, are not just for real estate. It's important to you to understand where this is taking place. Is it taking place on a desert island? Is it taking place in the middle of a runway? Is it taking place 
in a, you know, a hotel in, on vacation during the height of tourist season, or is it taking place during a major storm when nobody's coming? You know, all of this is important. If we can agree that there is no edge in simply selling or buying areas where inside bars show up, wipe, what type of strategy can we use? We can use any type of trading strategy. It's not an inside bar trading strategy though. We are not trading the inside bar. We are trading location, structure, market mechanics, and using the inside bar as a trade entry strategy. So this is the vital distinction. Look for inside bars to show up in areas where we can expect some type of price reaction. This will give us a better chance of success. And to highlight that, I'm going to look at the 15 minute chart and look at inside bars around support and resistance at either side of a trading range, even at the end of pullbacks against the trend. So here, what we're looking at is just a, a candlestick chart. Okay. Now, remember that inside bars show us a lack of volatility as the move is digested. We are looking for a relieving of pressure that is built up in consolidation to get us into a trade at a favorable location on the chart. So here we have a big move on the charts. Here we have consolidation, but now going forward, we don't have any inside bar candles here. Here we have a big move on the chart. We don't have any inside bar happening here. Okay. Here we have little movement. We're in consolidation, but no inside bars. What do we have here? We have a big bearish candle. We get a bullish candle that's fully contained in the bearish candle. We get a second candle. Well, this is more or less telling us that the market is shifting and it's giving us an entry point for a buy scenario because we've gone into the small consolidation and we're looking for who's going to take over the markets in what direction. So let's go step by step. A. Okay, over here in A, this is a top. This top was put in after a 1150 pip run to the upside. So in other words, this asset had been on a very strong uptrend. This was the top of that uptrend. Okay. So technically, if we had drawn a trend line on there, it would have gone up to here. B, this is where price push it above the A resistance because we could have said that swing high was a resistance line. And we do not see a follow through, which is sometimes something we'd expect to see at least a few candlesticks later. Our green candle, in, our green inside candle forms above and below the tested resistance line. So this being our resistance line, Given the context, an extended market, a breakout with no follow through, a short, so a short makes sense. Okay. But we need to find an entry point. We need to find something that this price action is telling us. Okay. Now, C, the price is broken with momentum. The support level that formed around B and price that's pulled back towards what may be potential resistance, price forms a trading range. We get a poke above the range. And then price recovers back inside and we get an inside candlestick, but no reason to short. Okay. So we're, we're, we're just looking at interpreting price. That's all we're doing right now. So we knew we had an 1150 price point run up, comes off of a strong uptrend. We have a swing high. We have a whole bunch of consolidation and we're looking for 
something to tell us to enter the markets either either a short or a long position. So there are five things you want to look at when evaluating any inside bar pattern. Think of this as a checklist for trading an inside bar. First, we need to look at time frames. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to look at the chart and do what we just did, interpret what the overall chart is telling us. Not what the human psychology is telling us, not what human beings. We need to understand what is happening what has happened and what has led us to where we are. So first and foremost, the time frame you use to trade inside bars is extremely important. As a general rule, any time frame less than the daily should be avoided with this strategy. But for us, since we're short-term traders and we're traders, not investors, we would look at a 15 minute or one hour. This is because the lower time frames are influenced by noise and therefore produce a lot of false signals. And when we're using a 15 or one hour, this is what we have, but we need something to fit our trading. An inside bar that forms on a higher time frame has more weight simply because the pattern took more time to form. This means more traders were actively involved in its formation, which as a result equals higher capital flows. Now, as you know, I'm a huge advocate of trading from the higher time frames. Personally, I believe a 15 minute or one hour is what we use for entry points and exit points. A four hour or one day chart is what we use to make our decision, whether we're gonna go long or short or not trade at all. And a longer period is what we knew to understand the environment in which we are trading. So at a lower time frame chart, we are going to have many inside bars showing up. If you are trading a 15 minute chart and are trading Forex, in one 24 hour section, you have 96 bars. Given that there are slower sessions in Forex, you have the potential to see too many inside bars that you may have to decide to trade. Well, as I said, we're only concerned with the, the two, three, four bars that are forming at the wall, at the far end. Trading an inside bar strategy with the context or location is a mistake. It is not a trading strategy by itself. So we had to get the context. This is what we did. Now, there is nothing inherently important about an inside bar showing up on a chart in most locations. Happens quite often. That's not to say that the lower time frame charts are useless for trading. You never know which time frame will control the ex it will start to exert control. Higher time frame charts such as a daily chart, remove a lot of the noise of the market and the setups are much cleaner. There are several inside candles on this chart and the majority of them do not lead to any type of trade that's worthwhile. Okay. We are seeing just normal price evolution. So let's consider there, there may be places on these lower time frames where an inside bar trading strategy will work wonderfully. Look at the top of the chart prior to the move downward. This is actually a rally on the daily chart that ends with a collapse. Now remember, the trend is your best friend. The age old saying, the trend is your friend. If you have been trading for any length of time, I'm sure you've heard this one many times. As common as saying may be, it has never lost its significance in the financial markets, especially when it comes to trading inside bars. So one of the biggest clues is understanding what trend you're in and what trend you're coming out of. Like we saw that other asset had 100, 1150 pip move up. It had the swing high and was coming off of that uptrend. Okay. We saw some movement that we could have probably traded up, but it wasn't gonna get us anywhere. And then we saw consolidation. We need to wait for a confirmed downtrend before we're going to jump into sell because we don't ever trade against the trend. In fact, trading with the trend is the only way to trade an inside bar setup as a continuation. So here are examples of two inside bars that formed in different market conditions. So here we go. 
we're looking at an uptrend okay, of an asset. And here we have a strong move up. We have the mother candle then. And you can't tell it's a mother candle yet, but we get the inside bar. What is the definition of the inside bar? It is fully contained within the previous candle. The next candle breaks out and breaks upward. That's giving us telling us the buyers have jumped back in the market and is giving us a buy scenario. Here we're staying in here and here we got a mother candle with two consecutive inside bars. Again, another push, continued push upward. Trade with the trend, you could have gotten in here and stayed in or you could have waited and gotten in the next time and you would have been right all along. So the bullish inside bar setup above formed on the Japanese USD JPY, the yen, in the daily time frame. Note that this pair was in a strong uptrend leading to both setups. This is the kind of momentum you want to look for when trading this strategy. Okay. Because you have the trend up, you already are itching to get into a long position, but you don't know where to get into it. Okay. This gives you the get in the market. It's telling you, okay, price is ready to continue its move upward. Now here, we have an inside bar in a choppy market. So the inside bar in this chart is formed on the G GBP JPY, the pound against the, the yen, daily chart in a choppy market. This sideways price action re represents consolidation. So we're coming off of a steady downtrend and we're still in a downtrend. We get a swing low that we can draw a line forward and it's holding. <clears throat> so we have a support line, a resistance line. We actually have the formation of a mother candle here, or what we thought it was, but we didn't really get it. Then we got this weird candle, which actually could serve as the mother bar for the, for the next candle. But one of the rules of thumb is we always like to see the baby candle the opposite color of the mother can. It doesn't have to be what we like to see. But this market was too choppy to get into because we could have gotten a downtrend. We wouldn't have gotten a shirt kicked on the next bar. But what happened was it was too big of a mess. So what we should have done is we should have been looking at other things to tell us, okay, there's not a false signal. It's just not a trading signal. We get it here and we get it here again because we're just getting a lot of choppy mess. And these are can be defined as mother bar and baby bar, but they're really just a whole bunch of mess in the markets. Nobody's in control. So it's all about the break gap. The best inside bar setup form just after a break of consolidation where the preceding trend is set to resume. And the reason is quite simple. So here we would be hoping that something would break this swing low. But if you notice, we never went back into that downtrend. So what we were looking at is a reversal and we don't want to trade the reversals. So a period of consolidation within a broader trend is the market's way of regrouping. In an uptrend, the consolidation is triggered when longs decide to begin taking profits. This causes the market to pull back where new buyers step in and buy, which keeps the price elevated. So what we're doing is we're just bouncing around support and resistance lines. This pattern continues for hours, days, weeks, but there's nothing that's driving the market. Here's a great example of a bullish inside bar that formed on the USD Canadian dollar. This is actually a trade setup that was called for here on the daily price action and has worked out beautifully this far. So here we have an uptrend, nice strong uptrend. We go into an area of consolidation, we can actually form a support line below here, okay? And we go into a choppy mess and we actually form a, a triangle. But look, price keeps trying to push up, push up, push up, getting nowhere. Now we get the break out of the triangle and what we're hoping for is a continuation signal. We got the breakout, 
Oh, do we know that it's going to continue and have the momentum? Then we get the baby candle, the inside bar candle. That tells us we have a continuation of the trend and we would come in here and buy long. This is the ideal scenario for trading. A bullish inside bar setup as the market has gained a fresh set of buyers who are ready to push the price higher. Of course, the opposite holds true for trading a bearish inside bar after break of consolidation. Now, a favorable risk to reward ratio is needed for any setup taken here in the daily price chart, daily price action. This is truer whether you're trading an inside bar, a pin bar, or a wedge breakout. Each and every strategy needs to be accompanied by a favorable risk to reward ratio. So what's the risk to reward ratio? What is a favorable ratio, you ask? It means always keeping a risk to no more than half the potential reward. So if you can see that you could take possibly a 200 pip profit, your stop loss can be no more than 100 pips away from the entry price. But then you have to do is your own risk management to see if you can afford to put a stop loss at that time at that price, because maybe if price fell to that stop loss, it was outside your risk management because that loss would be more than you could afford. If you're using the more aggressive stop loss strategy, this means selecting inside bars that form near the upper or the lower range of the mother bar. This allows you to achieve a much more favorable risk reward ratio. So notice how the bullish inside bar in this illustration is formed at the top of the mother bars range. Now remember, trading is about finding perfect patterns. And also remember, we're trading at the wall here. So we had this candle, we have this candle, we just had this candle form. We want to tr trade going this direction. So we have this inside bar, this mother bar, because we had the formation of the inside bar. But see how the inside bar was all formed in the upper half of the mother bar. Well, that's another way to interpret this. So notice how the bullish inside bar in this illustration formed at the top of the mother bar's range. This is what you want to see in a favorable setup, especially if you're using the more aggressive stop loss play, placement, which means placing your stop loss below the inside bar rather than the mother bar. So your stop loss would be placed here. Your risk reward ratio at two to one should be placed about here. And you are also trading with the trend, which has been steadily going up. So here you have the exact opposite. The same holds true for the bearish inside candle, the bar picture candled here. Now, the last, and it's funny to say, size matters. Last but not least, the size of the inside bar relative to the mother bar is extremely important. This idea piggybacks off of a number four above, where the inside bar forms the upper or the lower range of the mother bar. In my experience, the smaller the inside bar is relative to the mother bar, the greater your chance of experiencing a profitable trade setup. What happens is you can have this mother bar, okay, whether it's a huge bar or a medium sized bar. You get a new bar that's inside of it, but its body and its wicks are almost the extent of the inside bar. That's not really an inside bar. It's, a, it's just a happening. Where would you get a smaller, much smaller candle inside, and especially when one is towards the top or the bottom of that candle? We're getting a better trade setup. So remember, that an inside bar represents consolidation after a large move. This is what makes this, these patterns so lucrative. The fact that we are trading a breakout after a period of consolidation. Therefore, the tighter the consolidation is, the more volatile the ensuing breakout will be. Of course, this isn't always the case, but in my experience, it holds true more often than not. And basically in trading, if we're doing the right risk reward ratio, placing our stop losses right, all we want is more favorable trades than losing trades. Now, what doesn't matter? 
What doesn't matter when trading this particular pattern is whether the inside bar itself is bullish or bearish. The inside bar, like I said, doesn't have to be the reverse of the previous bar. In other words, if the market is an uptrend and an inside bar forms inside a larger bullish candle, it doesn't matter if the inside bar is bullish or bearish. The same holds true when trading a bearish pattern. The only thing that matters is whether the mother bar is bullish or bearish. The formation of the mother bar in combination with the trend is what tells you which way to, tr to trade an inside bar setup. So keep this chart in mind. Remember, we are not only trade real we are not really trading an inside bar strategy, but in this case we are trading two strategies and using the inside bar for our entry point. So our first trade is actually a resistance holding trade. We are using the inside bar, the sign of a lower volatility, to position to short in this context. This is a trade that sets up via mean reversion, a pullback trade. We are using the previous support, now going to act as a potential resistance. And you can short the break of the low of the motherboard and place your stop some distance away from where the price pivots. So what we're looking at is using the mother bar and the baby bar as the entry point for a separate strategy. So keep in mind that the first trade is actually going against the trend that was occurring and also against my rules. Price action leads us to consider a short trade when we know we're wrong if price reverses and keeps moving upward. You may want to use a slightly tighter stop in this situation. Profit target would be the same regardless of your entry strategy. Our first trade could be a start of a new trend. So we would want to see how price reacts at the pivot point in the final run up. So here we go, we have a price moving up. We come up here to one, we have the nice move of the candle. We have the formation of the baby bar inside the mother bar. Okay, this is a signal. Okay, now we have a choice. We could look for the, to, long, to trade long, but this, this trend is really petered out. So do we trade opposite the trend? Do we forget the trend is your friend? Okay, my rules are no. Some people are contrarians. You could take that, but I don't even know how at this point you could actually even decipher that you've got a reversal situation and not a continuation cycle. So rarely in trading is anything perfectly clean, especially if you take into consideration the mechanics of the market. Anybody that tries to tell you that price needs to react perfectly is confused and most times close, close is close enough. There are too many variables at play to expect or demand perfection in price. So keep this in mind. The white trend line on this chart, which is the same as this chart, but you can see it better here, is a downtrend. So this is a resistance line, but it's not really telling us that this uptrend is over. Now, if we went back and looked at a longer period chart, we might see that the overall asset is in a downtrend. So even though we see price near the end of the, the bear flag exceed the high of the mother bar, do you disregard what the pattern is telling us? My rule of thumb is no. Go find another trade somewhere else. There's always something. I look for as close to perfect setups as possible. I don't want to risk trades. There, you know, the market offers you a billion opportunities. There's always an opportunity. So if my trade isn't exactly fitting, now, like I said before, price close is close enough. Yes, and I agree with that. But unless my strategy, unless my plan is that close, I don't want to be a contrarian. I don't want to say the market's reversing. I'll just say, go away. It didn't cost me anything not to make that trade. I'm looking for the most high probability trade possible. 
So do we disregard what an inside bar indicates? Yes. The use of the stop loss order is recommended for any Forex trading strategy. The inside bar trading system is no different. You should always put a stop loss when trading inside candles, but where? The proper location of your stop loss is slightly beyond the inside candles top or bottom, depending on the direction of the break. In other words, if the inside range gets broken upward, you can buy the Forex pair and place a stop loss order right below the lower candle wick of the inside candle. The same is enforced for the opposite for a bearish breakout. Projecting the potential movement of an inside bar can be very challenging. Often inside bar trades can lead to a prolonged impulse move after breakout. So employing a trailing stop after price has moved in your favor is a smart trade management strategy. Along with this, I typically like to use a fixed take profit point at one to one and a half to one or two to one. I always recommend CFD trading two to one. To scale out the inside bars in this manner, if the stop loss is at 80 from is 80 pips from the entry, then the minimum target would be located at 120 pips or in my case, 160 pips. Now I have to see if there's a possibility of reaching that target based on the current strategy. Do I have a support and resistance line to look at? Do I have some other reason to believe I could make 160 pips excited in my heart? So here's the perfect setup. Now let's forget about Let's make believe that none of this has happened. So we had the mother candle here. Baby candle. Breakout candle above the mother candle. That gives us the buy scenario. But again, we're trading against the trend. But on the other hand, this is a swing low. Price bounced off the swing low and could not reach that low again. So by looking at that low and not being able to see that price, even the lower wicks come near that low again, that's telling us that we are in a reversal pattern. We've got a real honest to God reversal pattern. And we could have made a trade up, placed our stop loss below our swing low and we would have estimated our entry point somewhere around here. We would have let our trade run with a trailing stop loss all the way up to there. So. Let me get this mess off our charts here. So cons conservative traders should consider buying the euro US dollar when the price action closes the next candle above the upper level of the range. Right here. Aggressive breakout traders will consider buying when the price reaches a few pips above the inside candles high. So Here's the inside candle and a buy could be triggered here when we were above this price. Okay. If you, it depends on how conservative or how aggressive you are. Your stop should be located below the bottom of the range as shown in the image. So there's no doubt that inside, can, inside bars can be a profitable way to trade the Forex market or interpret price action. However, it isn't a setup that occurs often, at least not in favorable context. This is why I don't advocate using the inside bar as your only setup to trade. By doing so, you limit your trading potential to the point that you are likely to begin taking subpar setups. That is, and it is important to treat inside bars as another tool in your trading toolbox rather than the toolbox itself. 
So what you want to do is you want to look for these inside bars, but only look for the perfect scenario. Because like I said, they happen quite often. You have to be able to see them, see how they are acting, see and understand what you're looking at on price. Look at the whole overall trend. Look what price is trying to tell. Look at where you are against the window. Look what just happened. Look at the next candle. If you get the perfect setup, then make a trade. If you don't get the perfect setup, just go on to something else. So the inside bar setup is capable of producing consistent profits, but only to traders who are mine the five characteristics discussed. And on that note, I'm going to say goodnight. If you have any questions, okay, just go to www.jmfinancials.com and click on their customer support and talk to somebody live and know this will be a professional trader who will answer your questions, help you interpret and understand how to read price action. And they'll be glad to answer your questions. So thank you very much for joining us tonight. And again, thank you for supporting JM Financials as well as investing.com. Have a great trading week and a good night. Bye now.